Hey there, Squirrel Army. Today we're doing Monkey and Ape Tribal Deck with Kibo, the Uktabi Prince. So this is a Monkey and Ape deck, and uh, we're giving people bananas, and it's all crazy, and uh, it's an interesting uh, commander coming from a Jumpstart. So for those who don't know about this this is a monkey that you tap and you give each player a banana uh, they can sack that banana for green or red they gain two life whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield you put a plus one plus one counter on each of your monkeys and apes uh, and when he attacks defending player sacrifices and artifacts so we're going to get our own artifacts from this, and we're going to buff our commander up. Obviously, we're going to also buff up any of our monkeys and apes that we do have on the battlefield at the time. Um, so we want to be focused on monkeys and apes so that they can get the benefits and whatnot. But we're also making our opponents sacrifice artifacts. So finding ways to make our opponents make sure their artifacts are going to the graveyard um, as much as possible is something we really want to be doing. Um, even though we are giving our opponents artifacts, our opponents aren't always going to have artifacts for us to kill. So it's one of those things where we might want to play some sort of strategy where we do give away more artifacts so that we can make them sacrifice more artifacts so that we can get that game plan going. So that's going to be a little bit difficult to achieve, but still, there might be a way we could do that. So we're going to go through, or at least I am going to go through uh, some cards and some uh, old cards and look through Scryfall and whatnot and all of this sort of stuff. Find cards for a deck, put this deck together, and then come back and let you guys see what I did, and hopefully you'll go bananas for it. If you're enjoying the content here, you can join the Squirrel Army by subscribing. Alrighty guys, we are back at the list. Quite a list. Over $300. That surprises me for this list though. This list does contain some better dual lands and whatnot. So you could certainly shave the price down by cutting some of those better dual lands. And I did want to see that we actually made it to 100 cards uh, as well. But that is that. There are some other sort of more expensive-ish cards in this list as well. So it does uh, sort of add up after a while and whatnot. But Anyway, this is a pretty interesting deck list that I've come up with. It will be in the description if you guys just want to check out the list. Don't want to see me have to go through too much of what's going on here, but I will be going through the list here for those people that do want to see that. So we'll be just kind of going through, breezing through it pretty quickly. I'm not really going to talk about the lands because already sort of talked about it and touched on them but it's just a whole bunch of good dual lands and whatnot for the most part uh some lands that i didn't agree with or whatever here and there whatnot like misfire valley but i i just loaded it up and was like oh, okay cool just toss them toss everything that i find in this will do whatever um and just kind of throw it together i think khan the great curator is a great card for us because like, it's one of those things where we can lock down people's use of the artifacts that we are giving them. Um, if we do come up against artifact decks, it's kind of mean. It's very mean with uh, Mycosynth Lattice. Um, so that's kind of why I think that's in here and whatnot as well. They're both here together to be played together to be really mean to our opponents, but also so that we force them to have to sacrifice anything of theirs and whatnot so yeah it can get really mean i will not talk about too much of the ramp that's sort of in here it's just good two mana ramp stuff um and some of the more board wipey stuff like vandablast and blasphemous act that sort of stuff i won't really talk about the removal and instance and whatnot that are kind of in here um 
yeah, so, and we won't, uh, what else? We're not going through too much. We're not going through, through too many of the enchantments or artifacts for the most part, but a lot of artifacts here that do, uh, and enchantments that do help us out, uh, and some card draw stuff as well, um, in the terms of strategy, Descent Inverus, uh, Curse of Opulence, uh, shiny impetus are pretty darn good. Um, also things that give us counters, hardened scales, doubling our counters. Hey, how have we got two guardian projects in here? Oh well, don't know what's going on there. We'll just add a land because I thought we were kind of low on lands anyway. Whatever. Maybe I add a mountain instead of a forest because we're kind of low on mountains. Anyway, whatever. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, there's not much here to be said but that. Uh, some good cards in the artifacts, especially like Vanquish's Banner that helps us with the strategy. Um, the Contract, I think this is pretty good. Um, in some decks, it's really hit or miss, but and it is kind of hit or miss, but if we can ever get our opponents to take that deal... It's well worth it because, again, we'll get so many benefits for them sacrificing those treasures and whatnot, so well worth it. The Sword of Truth and Justice, just to buff up our stuff even more um, and proliferate and whatnot, I think that's well worth our time. Um, untapping our commander with the seal can be useful. I think there's another couple of these that are out there we could think about using, but we've got to we'd have to make some space, so it's tough. Monkey Cage just gives us a whole bunch of monkeys, so we want some monkeys. Blink, uh, Mask Wood Nexus can give us, you know, two two monkeys essentially, which are shapeshifters. I like Liquid Metal Talk and Liquid Metal Coating being able to turn anything into an artifact, so we make our opponents have to choose uh, any permanent essentially, but they'll choose their worst. And Herald's Horn too, because we're a monkey ape deck for the most part, um, so. It is tough to choose between the two, I guess, to a degree, but just choosing the best one at the time. I don't know how... I actually, you can look at the list and you can sort of figure it out. And we are heavier on apes than monkeys, so you want to choose ape more than monkey. And you can sort of see a lot of different breakdowns of the deck and whatnot and how your curve works out and things like that. So... These thing, these tools are useful. But anyway, uh, getting along with the main meat and bones of the deck, um, there are a few apes in here that are not that amazing, but I did try to pull into the better apes that are out there that actually have some decent power and toughness and decent keywords and whatnot. There's not that many that are out there that actually do a whole lot. There's just a whole lot of keyworded ones and whatnot. Uh, the Shaman, he actually does do some stuff that we do want, destroying artifacts um, and whatnot. Um, so that is kind of useful. Um, we've got Jolene. Jolene here uh, for more treasure generation. And, you know, that's really useful for us. Um, that's a really easy resource for our opponents to, you know, sacrifice and whatnot. And they won't really think about it because... We're an ape deck, we go ooh, ooh, and um, they won't really think too much about that. So, yeah. Uh, Kogler, I think Kogler is pretty good because, again, he uh, comes in and he fights something, which isn't too bad. Not amazing, but when he attacks, we destroy target artifact or enchantment. Defending player controls, and we can return a human we control to our hand to give him indestructible. Not that that's going to happen because I don't think we've got any humans other than you know, Jolene, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. I think it's fine. Mars Vandal, he is an ape in theory, at least he's everything as well, but he he can exile something, so sometimes that's okay as well. We sometimes need to exile uh, our opponent's stuff. We do have to exile something from our graveyard, but that's still okay if we've got something there. Uh Metallic Mimic just makes our apes enter with an additional counter, and he is an ape, essentially, so that's pretty darn useful. Uh, Realm Walker, you know, getting more uh, quote-unquote apes in the tech that actually kind of do something. 
um, is pretty useful. Actually, maybe I should have looked a little bit more into shapeshifters, but I think these are most of the best ones anyway. So getting that card advantage, we do need some sort of card advantage here. Um, actually, I think the uh, bet bander is actually pretty darn good because if we can keep giving it counters, it will keep distributing its counters. So we'll just keep getting out other stuff that's more important, growing bigger and whatnot. So that's what we kind of want it for. Um, the Silverback Elder. Silverback Elder is amazing uh, for this deck and really needed, uh, especially the Destroy Artifact Enchantment mode. We do want that, um, especially for our strategy. But, you know, the other modes aren't, well, the Gain Life mode isn't too amazing, but it's there if we really need it. But the looking at the top five cards, we need that card advantage. Even if it is just for lands, it's still one of those things. We need that card advantage. Um, so, yeah. There's a few other apes that are in here. And stuff that's in here, I think, here and there. But I don't think, for the most part, there's anything too amazing. Yeah, there's a couple of reach monkeys and whatnot. There's a few things here and there. So it's not much of a deck as far as that goes but it's a fun deck it's a silly deck it's got you know variety and revel in here to draw cards hopefully and whatnot it's got a whole bunch of things that are hopefully helping the deck out and uh, i think it's a pretty cool list this is a pretty upgraded list like i said like if you take a lot of the um better lands out here you'll probably drop this price way way down like, most of the price is here and there in the artifacts, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see where, like, the price is certainly in enchantments as well. Uh, but, yeah, 50 bucks in the uh, creatures. So, not a small amount. So, yeah, it is the most in the artifacts, which is, you know, certainly interesting. There's certainly some cards that are in there that are pretty decent. I think probably Microsoft Lattice being one of them. Um, but Khan certainly isn't cheap either. But, yeah, you guys can let me know what you think about this deck. It isn't too, too expensive, I don't think. Um, and, again, you can proxy some of these cards. And, again, this is just a suggested list and a suggested guide to build this uh, deck and this commander. Um, so you can build it kind of any way you want. One card I want to mention before we get going is True Top Village. It's kind of funny making a ape out of a land, but whatever. That is kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, guys, yeah, as I said, let me know what you guys think of this uh, AP Bananary goodness. And uh, yeah, hope to catch you in the next one.